house. Koinania is in this house. Join me with a shouting and a clapping ovation to welcome to this microphone, Apostle Selman Joshua. So Lord, let me just have your attention for a minute or two. First, I sincerely want to honor and appreciate the vision bearer who has gathered all of us together, um, Reverend Cannon and his precious wife. Let's just give them a big God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. And quite, quite touched. You know, our bishop here and all the fathers of faith, the priests, ministers, may the Lord honor you. I sincerely appreciate you in the name of Jesus Christ. And what, what a massive facility. I thought this was all until I looked up. And then I saw that. Amen. I believe that we are gathered tonight to really experience God. I believe that we came from our homes, our various, we left our various businesses to be here. One thing I can tell you for sure is that you will never remain the same. You will never remain the same. Hallelujah. Can we together in one minute just lift up your hands to Jesus? and ask him for a visitation tonight. Go ahead and pray. Lift up your voice and speak to your maker passionately, desperately from your heart. Father, give me an encounter. Give me a visitation. Set me ablaze. Let this city never remain the same. Are you praying? We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you do what you do. We need a move. We need a move. This is a move. Yeah. This is a move. So our prayer. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here. that you will help us 
May your word come with power, power to save, power to heal, power to deliver, power to restore, power to transform. And I pray, O oh God, that our lives and this city indeed will never be the same. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. Please be seated if you can. Amen. Now, I will, I will make two requests before we begin to teach. Two requests. Just, just reduce the volume a bit. Two requests. Request number one, I will request that you, as much as possible, be as silent as you can be so that you can listen. And then the second request is that your heart be open like... Um, the man of God was saying before I stepped up here to learn. It's important that this is both a crusade and a conference. A crusade because it seeks to reveal Jesus and to ensure that souls come to Jesus. But a conference because it also seeks to equip and to empower. Hallelujah. The primary assignment of a crusade is to be a platform for ingathering. It gives an opportunity for the gospel to be preached and it gives an opportunity for men to declare their interest as far as coming to Jesus and receiving his life is concerned. But conferences are designed to empower believers. Hallelujah. Um, and it's important we understand the difference. Crusades are not for the, matru the, the maturity of believers. They are largely for ingathering. The theme of the crusade is the gospel. But conferences help believers who are now saved to be built, to be discipled, to be transformed, and then to be empowered. But one thing that is common to a crusade and a conference is the presence and the power of God. It does not matter whether it is a crusade to save sinners or a conference to build believers. One thing we can be sure of is that the power of God is always present to heal, to deliver, to lift, to restore. Hallelujah. And... Um, I thought very carefully and prayerfully through the theme of your conference and I just thought that I would begin my teaching tonight by helping believers to really understand certain truths. There are truths in this kingdom that if we do not understand, we will never be able to number one, attain a level of spiritual growth and we will not be effective as far as representing the purposes of the kingdom is concerned. If you can hear me, please say amen. amen. So it matters that believers are taught the ways of God, not just stories, not just parables, not just preaching. The, the, the teaching of the word must be methodical enough to be able to transform believers to become something exact. Hallelujah. Let me show you a scripture. Luke chapter 1. We'll read the first four verses. Will we have it projected? Okay, Luke chapter 1. Please give us the first four verses. It's projected so you can look up and then I'll read. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. Dr. Luke is writing now. And he says there are things that among believers, there are things that are most surely believed. That means regardless the believers. Do you know why he's saying this? Here and there we may differ in terms of perceptions. Here and there we may differ in terms of methodologies, in terms of approach. But if you are a Christian, there has to be a common ground. There are things that are called most 
surely believe among us and then verse 2 says give us verse 2 even as they delivered them unto us which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word we're reading to verse 4 verse 3 it seemed good to me also having had perfect understanding this is amazing dr luke is not afraid to say look as far as this body of truth that the excelling of the saints depend on i have perfect understanding of it it sounds like arrogance what he's saying here that haven't had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto you in order most excellent theophilus why let's read verse 4 together if you can ready read that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed so he does not just want you to believe blindly because you came from a church that preached it he does not just want you to believe because you love the pastor who preached it he wants that you get to a point of persuasion the reason why the average believer in our world today does not have strength and stamina is because there is no conviction over the things that we believe we either believe them because of the platform that introduced them or we believe them because of the good heartedness of the individuals who communicated them but more than the platform more than the individual we must come to a point where we have a depth of persuasion the times that we live in require us to probe our beliefs from its foundation again to ensure that the things that we believe are true and then to ensure that these are things we can live for and also die for guess what paul said i know whom i have believed he said and i am persuaded that he is able i am persuaded persuasion talks of your depth of conviction are we together so this is very powerful because if we do not understand um, the basic truths that make the Christian faith, it will be difficult for us to operate in the power of God. It's the reason why most believers do not experience the power of God. You know, we live in a generation where we love anointing, we love miracles, but these things do not just happen. They rest on knowledge. They rest on knowledge. High level spiritual illumination, not opinions. Our fathers who have gone ahead of us, the reason why they excelled in ministry is because they took out time to have proper understanding of the ways of God. They didn't just jump into one truth, adding to another truth. For many believers, our growth process is largely random. We just pick a truth we read from a book, add it from the truth we learned from a conference we just stumbled into, and then one truth that we met during a bible study if you're fortunate to have a pastor who is a minister of the gospel then another truth comes from there we, you don't grow that way how do you get a student who goes through the college of medicine to become a doctor the curriculum is methodical right from 100 level you see that it doesn't matter who teaches it the manual is greater than the lecturer so you can be sure that after six years of a methodical approach, that naive young man or young lady will evolve into a version that will now be able to attend to the sick. Is that true? You see a young gentleman or a lady who desires, say, to be an architect. In fact, let me use a context that you are used to. Um, I was asking someone, why are people so wealthy and successful within your region? And I was listening to all the answers that he was given. And he said one that really touched me. He said, there is a culture within your region that when people rise, they pick people from within their region. Am I right on that? And then they train them. Do you know they don't pick people and just give them money? They subject them through a, a, a pragmatic, it's called apprenticeship. Is that true? So you learn on the job. You don't just learn on a blackboard. You make mistakes there. You are corrected. You make mistakes and then when they certify that you are good enough and you have 
proven well in character and all of that they now support you am i correct does the method work the results show this is the same way we have to build believers allowing believers to guess their way around the things of god guess their way around power guess their way around the miraculous guess their way around church growth guess their way these things will eventually frustrate believers is the reason why our harvests are not potent is the reason why there is no continuity to what we do you call this a quarry site this is where you chisel all kinds of stones until they become stones most precious you see that and then when you now place them they they become beautiful but they are chiseled and they are made so i think that is very very important that our approach we have lots of priests here i had the privilege of being raised in an anglican seminary so i am not naive at all hallelujah it is also the reason why by the privilege of god's grace from that foundation we are able to dispense the word because the growth system is methodical it's not guesswork it's important believers know what they should become and it's important those who mentor and build they have the end in view you don't drive into nowhere 99 percent of your journey you do not see your destination physically yet you know that you will arrive there that's why you started so i should be able to pick a believer at random can i use you gentlemen come i should be able to pick this man what's your name daniel, daniel. this is daniel so if i pick this young man i should be able to tell him as a man of god in three years this is what you should become is that true and that after three years this gentleman who came on a crusade ground kneeling and crying and surrendering all to the lord at the end of three years he should not be guessing his way around spiritual things what has he been doing with three years i expect that at the end of three years he should be able to defend his faith through the knowledge he has gotten what do you know about prayer what do you know about increase what do you know about soul winning what do you know about god's program what do you know about church growth what do you know about ministry what do you know about demons what do you know about victory in christ what do you know about spiritual power what do you know about the holy spirit these are the tests the litmus test if this gentleman cannot defend his faith he has wasted three years Am I challenging you now? But the challenge is that this man, if he's allowed to just learn his ways, he will go to a bookstore and find one book on revival, pick it, read it halfway, and learn something there that he should have learned some other things before learning it. Then he will drop it and pick Benny Hinn's book, read halfway about the Holy Ghost, start learning something, then pick another book on prosperity, then listen to another message halfway on demons and not learn everything. He's shipping all kinds of imbalance and that constructs his theology. Now, when you send this man to be a pastor, he can only communicate the pieces of limitations he has gotten. Are we together now? I'm just setting a, a ground before we start teaching this night. Wherever we stop, we'll come back tomorrow. But this is important. I'm showing you why our spiritual products are not potent. Something is wrong with the approach. Now, for instance, this gentleman has a ministry. He's a sincere gentleman, fears God, called of God. But imagine the kind of fruits that will come from his mentorship. So if he's to teach them about demons, he will teach to the limit of his knowledge, which is largely insufficient. They are going to be in trouble because the whole counsel is not given to them then he will teach them a bit about fasting and prayer maybe from a religious standpoint then he will teach them about bible study then he will teach them about all these things he will reproduce himself including his limitation in those gentlemen all of them will go and start their own ministry and you know that as he spreads it gets worse the purest level of that imbalance will be with him as it spreads to those he's raising they will also add their own annex of pride and imbalance to it by the time it gets to the third and the fourth set it's already complete error and maybe largely nonsense none of them is bad none of them is evil 
but there was no methodical approach to their spiritual growth let me tell you this there is something you should learn before you start learning about things like wealth and prosperity and leadership so you find out that a believer just gets born again and the next message is learning is maybe wealth and prosperity it's not dead to the flesh exposing him to that kind of teaching now because what you are teaching him is true he will be empowered except for the fact that his spiritual life will begin to decline as he rises financially because the support system that should preserve his wealth through knowledge was not given to him or someone now wants to become a great politician or a great man of God and he does not know the spiritual attacks that follow the anointing every mantle has the attacks allocated to it if you are Elijah expect Jezebel there are attacks that follow mantles not individuals they don't care who whoever is carrying that mantle you see that if you are Jesus the scribes and the Pharisees will come after you if you are Samson Delilah will be somewhere looking for you the Bible says the things that are written are for time they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope are we still together so now imagine that this gentleman Daniel he now gets saved in a platform like this and then he has the opportunity to be under a pastor a priest who is enlightened enough and this gentleman now submits himself to this methodical approach for a long time his life will look like he's not producing results because he's not have hazard you see how Jesus made the apostles he did not make the apostles just by anointing them look at the ratio of impartation to teaching three and a half years to one moment for every time he would speak over them they would have to go through a long time of teaching come follow me he said and I will make you and every day without fail every day he subjected them through all kinds of teachings he started with the Beatitudes is that true taught them about the character of the kingdom the Beatitudes you are the salt of the earth he said you are the light of the world you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel then he now began to teach them on character and attitude and moral values then he began to teach them this is what you say in your law but this is what I now say that's mentorship and after a period he allowed them to ask him questions and he answered then he sent them on a spiritual industrial attachment two by two go and test run what I'm teaching you now and the Bible says when they went they returned and said my God we we did not place that much value on your lecture but Jesus I think we're already made he said no 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 let's go back to class this was just to test you do not rejoice just because demons were subject it's not your power I sent you with a name come back you are not yet trained I gave you my ATM it's not your money there's nothing in your account you just stay are we together now and the lecture continued a time came they got angry and they said look we can't just be learning every day where are we going we have left all to follow you it looks like you are scamming us tell us clearly and he said I know no man who has left father mother and all of these things for me and for the gospels but you will receive in this life i know you feel you are cheated you were businessmen and i called you and it seemed as though you left everything nobody becomes a failure following me jesus was teaching them now these guys did not know that jesus was going to die and go to heaven and leave them you know what their plan was their plan was that this invincible miracle worker who could walk through the crowd one day will go and confront Herod and Caesar and kill them and now become the supreme leader that was why the mother of James and John began to negotiate positions in advance for their children they were not interested in being apostles Jesus is a lesson that we must learn from is the truth many people came near the truth and they responded to the truth in many ways some 
wanted to be transformed by the truth john the beloved others wanted to make money from the truth judas iscariot others were even afraid of the truth thomas he will always doubt the truth so everybody in life is presented with the truth what you do and make out of it is up to you there are others who just want to make money out of the truth they don't care whether they are transformed or not provided is truth let me make money out of it a few would want to be transformed by that truth others want to be empowered by the truth but others will run away from the truth because it is a heart tonight God is giving you an opportunity and the truth stands before you not me I am a witness to the truth the truth stands before you again for some of you here don't be like Judas who wants to make money out of the truth for some of you here do not be afraid that the things that are shared would rattle your theology from left right center and run away like Thomas we cannot learn from John no wonder he was the one apostle who died a natural death because he allowed the truth to transform him are we blessed are you ready to pray now all that I've said is an introduction or just to get our minds together. Are we ready to pray now? Father, open my eyes that I may see. Go ahead and pray. Open my eyes. Some of you here are leaders of prayer groups. Some of you are leaders of intercessory groups. Some of you are pastors. Some of you are prophets and apostles, businessmen, politicians in the making. This is a conference that profits all wise. Go ahead and pray in one minute. Help me, O oh God, open my eyes that I may see. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, tonight, I want to start my session... And I want to title my teaching tonight, The Gospel That Works. The Gospel That Works. The Gospel That Works. I hope that the Lord will grant us grace to go to the basics of the Christian faith and examine with power the potency of the gospel its ability to transform an individual and its ability to transform a territory the gospel that works are we together somewhere in the course of the service wherever the holy spirit takes us we we'll stop there for tonight but i want you to pay attention i believe with all my heart that for every one person listening here up the balcony following online outside i see an overflow there i believe that there are many destinies connected to you it is important to pay attention because in our rising is the rising of others. Every time he sends a word to Jacob, the intent is that it gets to Israel. Are we together? Romans. Let's go to the book of Romans. Let's start from there. Romans chapter 1 from verse 16 we're going to trace the root of underdevelopment the root of depression and sicknesses the root of hatred and wickedness the root of weakness among believers this is the foundation I'd like us to start from there even before we talk about impartation and healings and power and then look at the church as God's battle act let's start with the gospel guess what it says can you read with me one to read for I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God uh-huh unto salvation to everyone that believe 
to the Jews first and also the Greek please keep that scripture there three very important information about the gospel number one the gospel was intended to reach everyone and to be received by everyone there are certain things that are not for everyone for instance the fivefold ministry Ephesians 4 says he gave on to some apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and teachers but here is a blessing that the Bible says it is for everyone provided you believe Igbo Yoruba Hausa white man European American Muslim non-Christian idol worshiper it does not matter who God is presenting to us a gift and a blessing that is intended for everyone without prejudice without gender without any issue of social stratification for everyone that believes number two there is something about the gospel that if you do not understand you will be ashamed to identify with it he starts by talking about not being ashamed i am not ashamed that means there is something about the gospel that can give you confidence if you really understand it it will give you confidence to announce it to declare it with boldness but if you do not understand the gospel there will be shame and there will be fear why because it will not carry the power and the potency so a man can be ashamed of the gospel if it is not understood and he gives us the third reason the reason why i am not ashamed is that the gospel that i preach to you is the power of god it is powerful meaning it works nobody is ashamed of what works uh -uh. is that true many of you are involved in several kinds of businesses several value chains and some of them may in quote respectfully speaking look like derogatory businesses but you do them with pride because there are results to show from it is that true anything that works you are bold to stand and declare it with power and with authority but usually whatever does not work or does not seem to work for you there will be fear there will be timidity there will be shame no wonder our the force for evangelism is gradually declining because there is something about the content the understanding and the administration of the gospel that we present it does not seem to work we finish declaring the gospel there are myriads of non-believers there and just one or two come and stand to give their hearts to jesus christ something is wrong with that content and yet we call it good news if i drop a million naira right now clean genuine godly money and i say if you have a need please come and pick it everybody will not be ashamed somebody before i finish talking will come and say thank you jesus god told me that i will i will be blessed <laughs> another person will come with boldness even if you are going to be recorded on camera let the camera do the recording here while you carry your money and go because you think that what you are picking is valuable to you why then do we have loved ones who are not saved and yet we do not care why do we have colleagues we have contemporaries who um, may not seem to be vocal about the things of god and then we ourselves are ashamed do you know why because the power ingredient is missing there is something about our communication there is something about our content and there is something about the administration of the gospel that needs to be re-examined and edited if you're with me say amen so let's look at the gospel there is a gospel that works there is a gospel that does not work because of jesus they did not get results from it another instance remember the sons of one skiva the bible says he was a priest and one time they brought a demoniac and locked him in a room and said we adjure you by jesus whom paul preaches and the demon now responds jesus i know paul i know who are you if you had left them there that would be fine the bible says that he's not only just told them who are you 
that he beat them and they came out naked imagine missionaries who went with power and zest and authority well suited all of a sudden come out beaten by one individual adults now imagine the kind of reproach that would bring to the gospel my assignment is to help in partnership with all the servants of God here seated that labor in doctrine and word in this city and then all who have been invited to teach my assignment is that we we'll lift up our hands together and more accurately present the ways of God so that we can lift on each other and an ambrasted to a the next level of its prophetic destiny in Christ if you're in agreement with me say amen. amen so Paul says I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation now another thing I would like to teach is that there are three levels of needs as far as men are concerned three basic levels of need the first need can I use you gentlemen just the gentlemen please come the Lord bless you eh? thank you for your availability I like to teach sometimes when I'm talking to a large audience now stand here you stand here let me have one more gentleman if you can I'm an unbeliever it's a better expression than to say a sinner because even if you do not commit any sin as it were the very nature of sin you understand that now yes when you say sinner people just think of other things and say no I'm innocent anyone who is not in Christ you may not be a sinner but you are non believer you are still in the same category are we together now the greatest need of this gentleman is salvation anytime you see an unbeliever one who has not received of the life of Jesus Christ by acknowledging the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus we are going to get there the greatest need everybody here of the millions of people in Onisha Anambra state the east of the Niger anyone you ever find in the marketplace in church in family who has not received Jesus his greatest need the greatest need of an unbeliever is not prosperity the greatest need of an unbeliever is not healing it's not miracles these things are wonderful they can profit him to a measure but from the mind of God and from the mind of eternity the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation please say salvation the greatest need Jesus said I am the way you don't get truth you don't experience life until you pass through the way I had to follow a door to come into this beautiful facility is that true as wonderful as this facility is I would never be able to see everyone gloriously beautifully dressed if I did not pass through the way and talking about the way the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man it seems right but the end thereof are the ways of death there are many ways that attempt to take people to God there are many ways that attempt to lead people to a prosperous life there are many ways that attempt to give people meaning the search for meaning is a universal search educated and uneducated male and female young and old the search for meaning remains a drive that the human race is yet to settle in on every single one of the over 4,000 religions I hope you know there are over 4,000 religions on earth today yes sir and more are still coming an attempt to search for meaning an attempt to connect to a deity that is higher than this three-dimensional realm it's led men to come up with all sorts of inventions empowered by demons empowered by their pride empowered by their conscience empowered by intellect empowered by imbalance all in a bid to look for this God who calls himself the way no other God claims is the way Jesus said I am the way so the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation now guess where the problem is this gentleman attends a wonderful crusade like this and an opportunity is given like I'll be making an altar call later on right many of you as you are listening to me right now the Holy Ghost is already speaking to you trying to bring your life in order that's what the gospel does 
because there are two laws that are at work one is called the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus romans chapter 8 and verse 1 the other is called the law of sin and death these are operations so whilst the gospel comes the holy ghost is doing there is a with surgical precision he's doing something in the life of individuals now this gentleman gets born again have i lost you are we still together he receives of the life of christ and then he's left alone because he does not know what his next need is are we together and after five years he's just rolling around church and there's no growth there's no maturity he does not know what next if you ask him have you given your life to christ as we call it he will say yes but now what are you doing with your christian experience and he will tell you i don't know if he meets someone you tell him be filled with the holy ghost if he meets another person you say do you know what go and become a worker in church you are not serious go and look for something to do in church you look for others you say do you know what um well go and look for a job now he's confused he does not know what else to do this is why our harvest continues to rot because the bible says that we bear fruit john chapter 15 and verse 8 herein is our father glorified he says that ye bear much fruit much fruit and he desires and intends that our fruits abide that they last there are people who come out for altar call more than 30 times in one year because they absolutely do not even know what they are doing is that true they get saved and they know that they are not growing they they retreat back into almost a worse state and when you make another altar call they come out and say look it's better to come out again than to go to hellfire let me just come out even if i'm not sure out of the one thousand times one will be right the most important thing is for me to get to heaven so the greatest need of an unbeliever is what salvation the greatest need of a believer who is saved is called transformation that is the greatest need of a believer the moment an unbeliever becomes a believer and will explain the process an unbeliever does not become a believer by inheritance from a natural descent transformation what is transformation transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like christ in experience my little children paul said of whom i travail until christ be formed in you the formation of the Christ the character of the Christ in reality being formed in you he spent the entire six chapters of the book of Ephesus now theologically speaking and I'm talking to people who are theologians here intelligent people who are masters of church history and of doctrine so we are speaking here to people who are intelligent Ephesus was a business hub of the then uh, time and you know they were under the influence of a goddess called Diana when Paul came and was talking and teaching the church in Ephesus theologically speaking is believed and purported that the book of Ephesians contains the highest church truth it was it was an exegesis it was the zenith of his apostolic ministry because he breaks it into three sections one he reveals our positional advantage by reason of the sacrifice of Jesus and then number two he reveals our walk in the kingdom the character and the stature of the believer and then number three he opens us to the fact that we are not alone on earth that there are arsenals and forces of darkness that will attempt to frustrate the counsel of God and he teaches us how to stand you see that now the entire six chapters of Ephesians contain this theological exegesis that bring balance to the believer's life your positional advantage in christ your work of faith and then the ability to stand against the wiles of the enemy the greatest need of the unbeliever is salvation the greatest need of a believer is transformation and can i submit to you this is for want of word the hardest assignment of the holy spirit in the life of a believer why because transformation requires the participation of your will 
and you can choose to refuse and because God does not force people he will have to make do with the allowance you are creating the school of the spirit is a very long school it's not one that you finish after two years four years you can take one course in the school of the spirit and finish it in three months the next course will take five years depending on your level of transformation what is the benefit of transformation transformation reveals it gives you allowance to reveal the reality the fullness of the potential of the life and the power of the Christ Apostle Paul when he was talking about salvation here's what he said he said this is the record that God had given us eternal life are we together so way we call it the life of God he said this life was so structured that the administration of it is such that you must encounter the son before you have that life he that had the son had that life whoever does not have the son does not have the life are we together but Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 please give it to us and then let me wrap this up and we'll build a few things and pray Ephesians 4 and verse 18 reveals a tragedy it says having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God he's speaking to believers recipients of eternal life but he's saying just because you have it the experience of that life has not yet found expression because it is knowledge dependent so you can receive the life of god hallelujah you can receive the life of god by confessing jesus as lord and savior it does not mean you will walk in the reality of the divine life in experience the potential watch this everyone look at this this is my phone is that true this phone can do many things unfortunately i'm not i'm not i'm not someone who is interested in all these things at all at all at all are we together social media phones i'm not it's not me at all but just for an example this phone can do so many things buying it and having it it is mine but it does not mean i am enjoying the blessings that are there why because they depend on knowledge i must be cultured to know how to open the box put in my sim and then you have to teach me the potentials that this same phone can browse this same phone can snap this same phone can call this same phone can do all kinds of things if i do not know i will keep the phone on my desk if you say all those who have this phone stand up i will stand up but if you say all those who are enjoying the potential of this phone i will have to sit down this is how salvation is just because you receive eternal life does not mean your life will experience the fullness of the potential that is contained in that life you will need knowledge so the man god saved and the life he received is an invincible life it's a life of power power above demons power above poverty power above failure yet he remains defeated why because there is no transformation transformation now begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom the administration of eternal life john 10 10 the thief cometh not jesus is teaching now the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy it says but i am come that ye may have life that is a level and then to have that life more abundantly there is a difference between life and abundant life life is a level your eternal destiny is secured by reason of your being grafted into christ that is life abundant life is eternal life alongside victory in this realm here and now are you learning listen you have to submit yourself that's why the bible says in the latter time many will not endure sound doctrine doctrine requires endurance are we still together many times when people see an anointed man or an anointed woman they do not know that this anointing rests on knowledge and what most people want if I ask you people now let's pray or let me begin to minister and prophesy many of you say now you are talking 
sit down quietly and learn there was never problem with the oil it was the vessel the vessel was too small so the oil looked small the oil always assumed the shape of the vessel is inside when the prophet was helping the woman he said there is nothing wrong with the oil go and borrow vessels borrow not a few expand your capacity through knowledge we are here for you come and do, do what you do we are here for you come and do what you do set our hearts on you so you do what you do we need a move so if i am an unbeliever even though i'm in onicha here what is my greatest need not a business idea those things are wonderful from an eternal standpoint the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation the greatest need of a believer is transformation the greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment this is the protocol the greatest need again i repeat of a non-believer is salvation when that person is saved you don't leave him the way he is you now submit him to a methodical approach to spiritual growth and there are two biblical indices to measure spiritual growth number one you are growing spiritually to the degree to which you are conforming in experience to the image and the character of the Christ that is the first index to measure spiritual growth the second index that measures spiritual growth is the, de the degree and the depth of your comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom that's where authority comes from the word exousia means power that comes through legislation and this is dependent on knowledge are we together transformation now this man submits through a process of transformation so they teach you something about prayer they teach you something about prosperity and kingdom wealth they teach you something about purpose and destiny they teach you something about character and moral excellence they teach you something about the heart of god they teach you something about revival what you call dominion in this kingdom is a summation of this spiritual intelligence you now have by reason of light it is light that elevates you so every time you encounter the word of god according to the law of transformation the bible says it is as we behold him that we are changed are we are we together now whether you behold him through visionary encounters or principally beholding him through his word and the lord appeared again to samuel in shiloh by his word so god can appear to people by visionary encounters and he can appear to them through his word either ways the moment you encounter the word of god accurately taught accurately taught they heard the word just like we did but the word did not profit them it is possible for the word to not profit you but it is the entrance of the word not the arrival of the word the entrance of thy word give it light and even understanding to the simple the bible says arise and shine isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 for your light is come not for your light is around it's always been there it's the day it comes to you that is the day you arise are we together now amplified says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new light so when a believer or when an individual is unsaved when an individual have not met jesus christ what is his greatest need salvation one who is saved what is his greatest need one who is transformed what is his greatest need why empowerment because empowerment now gives you the engracing to defend what you know everything you know will be tested in the face of real life situations so here in the school of the spirit he was taught 
that it is God's will for us to prosper here in the school of the spirit he's taught that money should never take the place of God here in the school of spirit he's taught that we have been raised up with Christ far above principalities and powers but all this will remain a lecture until he receives an engracing from God so he says tarry in Jerusalem I have taught you for three and a half years but I can't leave you like this you are at this stage now you hang on there has to be something that comes upon you and when the Holy Ghost comes he will turn you from men to witnesses a witness is a validator of a claim you do not need a witness in the court of law until there is a contention anytime there is a contention the judge says go and look for a witness the assignment of a witness is to prove the truthfulness and like I've always taught there is no witness who comes to the court of law empty-handed you always come with a token of truthfulness it is called evidence this is the assignment of the anointing that means the anointing has no assignment if you are not transformed the assignment of the anointing is to engrace you to defend what you know so when you say Jesus heals you open up scripture and show people doctrinally that he heals then the engracing to defend that this is how Jesus is glorified merely laying hands on the sick blindly does not give Jesus glory because the anointing should come in defense of something are we learning what then is the gospel what then is the gospel please write this down gentlemen thank you God bless you what then is the gospel very quickly let's just find somewhere so that we can pray theologically speaking there are seven different facets of the gospel seven of them but then my interest in this conference is just two dimensions of the gospel number one is the gospel of salvation the second is the gospel of the kingdom let's deal with the gospel as the gospel of salvation when Jesus came his first assignment was to remind the people of the then world that there was a problem with man problem that had a sociological expression a problem that had an economic expression a problem that had a moral expression a problem that had a spiritual expression but he identified all the ills in society and traced it down to one common problem he said look the crime the all kinds of things oppression there is a common problem this is Jesus teaching now that all these things have happened because there is a common problem and he called that common problem sin sin not just as actions but sin first as a nature that produces a variety of actions with no end the expressions of sin are only limited by the imagination of the victim of that nature that means there is no end to the various expressions when the nature of sin collides with the imagination of a man it can come up with eternal versions with no end are we together now so Jesus said there is a solution the solution is that number one I have come to demonstrate to you that this God who is invisible who you cannot see who you call many things and you attribute and credit many things to he has sent me I have come as his representative I have come to demonstrate the fact that God is love listen very carefully I'm teaching you the gospel of salvation there are five there are five subdivisions of the gospel number one is God's eternal plan for man that is the first dimension of the gospel theologically speaking that God intended for man to rule and reign with him 
the second facet of the gospel is what we call in theology the fall of man the fall of man is an attempt to describe everything that happened when man gave into the deception of satan in the garden and the consequences that happen everything comes under the fall this is the second facet of the gospel the third facet of the gospel is the justice system of heaven that even though man has fallen now he does not deserve anything but judgment according to the justice system of god because ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 20 it says the soul that seen it it shall die it's a verdict already that any soul that sins it should die is that true ezekiel 18 and verse 20 so god's eternal plan the fall of man through deception the justice and judgment of god is that true the soul that sins it shall die the fourth facet is now the introduction of God's desire to take responsibility and save men. Verse 23 of the same Ezekiel chapter 18. It says, give us, have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live. We now see the introduction of God's mercy to say, even though I am bound by my word, there is still a component in me that desires to draw man back to himself. So, the eternal plan of God, the fall of man, the judgment that comes in honor of God's justice, and then we begin to see the mercy of God introduced. And then the last facet of it is Jesus Christ, a revelation of the love of the Father. This is very important. If you really want to understand the gospel, you have to understand these facets. His original plan that was and still remains. The fall of man. And then the justice and judgment that was imminent over man. God's communication of his mercy and Jesus who now came to make all this a reality. Now, write please. The gospel of salvation also is a revelation of the Father's love. Just walk with me tonight. The gospel is the revelation of the Father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ. A revelation of the father's love that was demonstrated or revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ the object of that love being man and then by extension the entire creation you have to understand the object the target of salvation was not just man it was man and then the entire creation because the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 that creation was subject to bondage vanity by reason of the fall of man so i say i take it again the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the father's love revealed or demonstrated in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus christ the object of that love being man and then creation why did jesus come then there are three basic reasons why Jesus came to earth. Number one, Jesus came, watch this very carefully. Jesus came as a revelation of the Father. He came as a manuscript so that we'll compare all that we know about the invisible God. Are we together now? Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3. When you read from verse 1, it says, God who in sundry times and diverse manner spake to us, in time passed through the prophets had in this last day spoken to us through his son whom he had appointed to be heir over all things verse 3 says he says who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person is the image of the invisible god so jesus came as a marking script he came so that we can compare all that we've known about god to him and if anything, if we find anything in his life 
that we think was in God and was not represented in his life, then we can throw it away. Number two, he came as a model to show us the possibilities that can happen to men when they become empowered by the Spirit. And then number three, he came as that mediator of the new covenant, the lamb himself that will be slain. In Revelation, he said, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive glory, honor, power, seven things. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Are we still together? Yes. My brothers and my sisters, I do not intend to insult your pedigree, but if you do not understand all that I have said, you are not a Christian. You may be a church goer, but you are not a Christian. A Christian is not one who goes to church on Sunday alone. A Christian is not one who identifies with a religious sect that believes in Jesus. A Christian is one who, number one, has become a recipient of God's life. And every believer, regardless denomination, every believer, regardless our doctrinal differences and all the differences we have in the body of Christ, this is a foundational truth. When I was in the seminary, you've heard me teach this all the time. One of the most powerful things I learned was the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed is, in my opinion, uh, it contains the closest expression of the summary of this doctrine of the Christian faith. With no bias whatsoever, a creed that reminds you of who you are and what you stand for. Are we blessed? So that as you leave this conference now, as you walk through the night, already this teaching has trained your discernment. Immediately you see someone who is not saved. You know the kind of prayer to pray for the person. More than praying for breakthrough, more than praying for increase, you know that the greatest need of that person from an eternal standpoint is salvation. And one who has now been saved, if you are to buy books and give him, you know what kind of book to give him because you can gauge his spiritual level immediately. And then when you find a believer who has been saved, sincerely teaching the word of God, but he cannot validate everything he claims to know. You know what is wrong with that person. And you can tell him, my brother, in addition, you are so transformed. Do you know, let me tell you this. There is nothing more frustrating in the journey of a believer than proposing so many spiritual things without the engracing to defend them. God can heal and the sick still go back sick god can deliver god can empower all business people come together i want to speak over your business in jesus name amen and nothing happens every time jesus saw barrenness he did something about it the tree that was taken from the earth and did not produce he cost it are we blessed now all of these three categories of people are in this auditorium right now as I speak. There are people here who their greatest need tonight, even though you came to be healed, even though you came to receive, but from God's perspective, your greatest need is salvation. There are people here who you have given your life to Jesus Christ, but you are wondering, why are things not working in my life? Apostle, I love Jesus, but I'm tired. It looks like the only thing growing in my life is my age. Nothing else is growing. Let me diagnose the problem for you. What is wrong in your life is there is no transformation. Or no methodical approach to your growth and transformation. But then there are a few others, not many of them. You're saying, Apostle, I submit to you that with every sense of humility, I have been in the church. I have served. I have loved God. I am tired of bringing reproach to both God and myself. I'm tired of saying things. I'm a leader in a prayer group. We cry and fast and pray and I tell people in the name of Jesus things will change. I see them after two weeks and they say, Pastor, nothing has changed though. And you know, people have stopped telling lies now. They will tell you, I was not healed. That pain is still there. My headache is still paining me, you know, in my head and all of that.
there are some of you here who are men and women of God and your cry is for genuine empowerment genuine empowerment Lord may we not stand before people in Onicha and keep saying things that we cannot defend God can do this God can lift God can change. I know my God is the lion of the tribe of Judah, we say. He's the rose of Sharon. And while you are saying it, someone who is sick is saying, now is my chance. And after three hours, you say, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the person is saying, no. So you pick the Bible and you tell the barren woman, I know my God is the God of Hannah. You are right. But did you not read in your Bible that the same Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? And someone comes and says, look, I come from a family where we are 12. Nobody has risen in this family. We love God, but we don't know what kind of oppression. Someone told us you are a man of God. We have come to you. Since we can't see Jesus, you are the closest that we can see. So we have come to you. Usually we say, let us pray. And we say whatever we say in that prayer and say, Amen. And they, re they return rejoicing. They even can give us an honorarium to honor us. And after two years, they are still the same. Usually they will still respect you. But they will mark you for not having results. And never come to you again. So next time you say, lift up your hands. They are lifting it physically, but in their heart, their hands are down. Because they say, I do not discern. Ah, let me speak over someone after this conference in the name of Jesus what will come on your life will turn you into a sign and a wonder please sit down do you know what will happen in Onisha if by this week three or four popular madmen completely get healed while you are doing that someone who has been barring to the scene of everybody now becomes pregnant and then while you are doing that someone who you know there is a spirit that is sitting on their family all doors open not for one person or two three everything that happens can i tell you this um there is something about the news that genuine results bring it becomes too powerful to be quiet about it that becomes a discussion in the market have you heard what Jesus is doing? We don't know what revival is happening in Onisha. But I went to this Anglican church, I saw fire. I went to that other one. You too is happening in your church. And the other person says, my prayer group, I don't know what is happening. These men have been on fire. This is my assignment. There are five people now, the power of God is coming on them. Just pick them and bring them out. As I'm talking right now, I just saw light. Just pick them and bring them seated, scattered across. I just saw light. We'll have some time to minister. Bring them. Watch this. The things that I show you, I want to bring you to a realm of authority in the spirit. See, it says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned, except he strives lawfully. I'm bringing you to a place where we contact the power that our fathers gave us as a heritage. Genuinely from the spirit. That our cities can be changed. Please help them. And for, maybe you may have a covering for them if you need to. If there is none, then just hold them there. Do, do you understand what I'm saying, please? Hallelujah. Listen. If their skirts are short or there's something that exposes them, just keep them where they are. Talk to those ladies for me. I'm not sure they're hearing what I'm saying. Now, listen, listen, listen. My brothers and my sisters, I guarantee you by the God of heaven, if you pay attention to what I'm telling you, you will leave this place and no, you will not be able to reconcile your position and your past again because for many of you you will drink in this conference of ancient spiritual fountains you will you will contact levels of grace levels of grace
levels of grace levels of grace levels of grace levels of grace, levels of grace. levels of grace levels of grace the spirit of revelation i'm seeing seven people there is a strong anointing some of them are i'm seeing two of them as the priests here seven people i stretch my hands right now seven people that grace for revelation please bring them whether you are an usher or not just help those who are under the anointing the spirit of revelation god is opening you he is is honoring your hunger the depth of your hunger there's 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 what you have desired you have desired to move into these dimensions in the spirit pray in one minute while you are standing oh god open my eyes i'm tired of this level spiritually someone is praying for the sake of my generation for the sake of the east of the niger hallelujah now listen to me madam this woman i don't know who she is madam please lift your hands i saw like oil coming on you please don't miss we have i know that our time is limited i may not be able to prophesy and speak to people who is uzo chuku i'm hearing a name uzo chuku who is that uzo chuku i'm hearing a name you are holding something like a file is there someone like that uzo chuku something like a hand a file this is what i'm seeing in my vision is there someone like that who is that what are you holding lift it up what's your name stand up my friend your life is about to change my friend this man lift your hands i just saw fire coming on you take that fire right now in the name of jesus you will never be the same help them right to the back i'm seeing an anointing coming on that person may that fire come upon you in the name of jesus the christ of god now listen help him bring him out bring him out i want to speak to him that gentleman what's your name sir where are you from? Anambra State, sir. Yeah. Huh? Enugu, sir. Huh? Enugu, in Enugu, Anambra State, yes, in Anambra State. Yes, sir. Is there a place called Enugu in Anambra State? Okay, okay. Okay, it's a town here. I see. I want to pray for you. You believe in Jesus? My friend, look at me. What do you do? I'm a minister, sir. One, two, three, four, five. I've seen, I'm seeing a family, five ladies. But it looks like nobody is moving in that family please don't just come out at random don't come out at random the power of god i know that i've, I've spoken but god god did not gather you here to waste your time i assure you i assure you by god let this man come what is your name sir what's your name i want to pray for you i don't know you but look at me you will begin to walk in the healing anointing this is a grace you have desired i stretch my hands right now may that anointing come on you you will never be the same take that fire right now jesus christ you will never help this woman i'm seeing an angel pouring oil on her i don't know who this woman is and the lord is saying he's giving her the grace she will start laying hands on people that are buried and the lord is going to begin to honor his word over her life hallelujah am i wasting your time we're going to pray
there is a lady here the power of god is coming on you there will be a loud shout please pick the person and bring the person here brothers and sisters you see let me tell you this everything you see there is nothing to us in ourselves we are only products of god's mercy our assignment is to project jesus but you see everything you see the, the days of superstar christianity is over god desires that all men step into these realities if they are interested if they are interested if they are interested if they are interested sir this man please shift for me this man praying what's his name come no not you what's your name sir who is timothy it's me what's your name timothy can i pray for you because your life is about to change like this month next month things will turn around in your life you will never forget this conference i stretch my hands let that anointing come upon you right now in the name of jesus christ the bible says wherefore god had so highly exalted him i took out time to teach you the gospel because this is the power of God. I told you it's the gospel that works. There is a gospel that does not work. The Lord is showing me a woman here. Eight years. Eight years. No fruit of the womb. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have to find somewhere to pray tonight. And then so we wrap up we still have a session please let me encourage you whatever sacrifice you will make for all these sessions please make it for your destiny hallelujah we're just starting tonight and if the organizers will permit by tomorrow night we'll turn this place into a miracle service where we will shake the foundations of this city from ground up in the name of jesus christ and I'll be requiring that everything that has refused to answer in your life, write it and bring it here by tomorrow night. And let the God in heaven, if there is a God in heaven, you will watch before your eyes the dominion power of light over darkness. Hallelujah. Is there a name like Na Emeka? Is there something like that? Na Emekan, who is that? The guy I'm seeing is wearing a tag, like you're a staff, you're a worker, you're wearing this kind of thing that these ladies are wearing. There's someone like that. Aha, uh -huh, okay, come. No, we, both of you, you can come. You are Na Emeka too. What do you do, sir? My friend, what do you do? I'm into electric cars. Huh? Into electric engineer. Stand up, stand up. I did, I'm, I'm an electrical engineer, sir. Electrical engineer. How about you, sir? I finished my NYC last two years. I want to pray for you. My brothers and my sisters, I know that this is a land that God has blessed. But after this conference, what will enter your hand will surprise you by the God of heaven. <laughs> listen, listen. There is a prophetic dimension to wealth. He says, believe the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets. Anything that has refused to let you go, that between this night and tomorrow, help them please. He must let you, help them, just help them. I know that we are going to wrap up. My friend, you believe in favor? Do you believe in the favor of God? I stretch my hands and I pray for you both. I bring you the power of this kingdom that we so represent in the name of jesus may your life change right now in a way that will surprise you may your life so change we're wrapping up but i'm hearing the sound of chains and the lord is saying that these chains must give way now 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 please as i pray there's no space here you may not bring them but whether you are an usher or not i just want you to hold them Tomorrow we'll take a few testimonies. Many of you will be surprised. Age-long captivities that have refused to leave. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. 
and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty can I pray for you in the name that is above all names the overflow all through the balcony every power that has refused to let you go at the count of three I want you to shout the name Jesus that is the name that has been exalted and watch what begins to happen in the mighty name of Jesus I decree and declare that every power of witchcraft everything that has held destinies down at the, 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 the mention of that name it doesn't matter how long you must give way right now are you ready on each other one two three shout Jesus I command those powers go now let God's people go now help them please my God yokes of darkness ancestry in the name that is above all names I command you let them go now release their destinies now in the mighty name of Jesus every tree that has not been planted by God we uproot it now every cause every yoke hear the word of the Lord let God's people go now in the name of Jesus my goodness just help them so they don't that same Jesus Peter said has been exalted as both Lord and Christ Lord and Christ Lord and Christ I'm praying again any chain holding anyone down so that you are not moving forward I'm telling you I'm just seeing chains breaking I command break now break now break now break now every chain on each i hear the word of the lord chains be broken now hallelujah just help that woman there is a mighty impartation that is happening to our auntie there you see in an atmosphere of God's presence and power like this truly there is nothing that God is unable to do it's just for your heart to be open and you will be surprised Sir, I'm seeing an anointing coming on your wife. There is a grace, and the Lord is saying that this is a grace for favor He's giving her in honor for standing by you. This is what the Lord is telling me. God will begin to raise people from everywhere, like pillars, to stand by your family and stand by this woman. This is the word that the Lord is giving me. Madam, I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus right now i decree and declare by the power that raised christ from the dead may that grace rest upon you and turn things around completely turn things around completely in the name of jesus christ i hope that god help her please help her you don't have to come forward please those who are there let's manage them so that don't worry Wherever you are, you don't have to move forward, please. So that there's no congestion here. Now listen, please. Listen to me very carefully. The greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation. The greatest need of a believer is transformation. The greatest need 
of a transformed believer is empowerment tomorrow i will tell you the greatest need of an empowered believer because a believer who has empowered also has a need in fact let me just tell you now the greatest need of a believer who has the anointing is character and humility Hallelujah. Lord, you took my pain away, and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah. One last prayer and then I'll make an altar call and we're done I thought I'll pray it tomorrow during a miracle session but the Lord is asking me to just pray it right now there is a grace for speed Believe me, Onicha, you are a successful people. God has shown you mercy. Your lives and even Anambra State and the east of the Niger, you are models in many regards. God has shown you mercy. But I tell you this, there is truly a grace for speed. You've taken the pain and the, the sorrow away. You've given me peace and There's no need to cry because you're always with me. You're my father, my everything. Oh, man, my, man, my, I got my brother in the listen if there is one thing you can receive this night dominion over time is real dominion the assignment of speed is to give you dominion not over things over time the unit of destiny is time whatever it's your time has eaten a portion of your destiny the bible says and the hand of the lord came upon elijah and he ran and over on barefoot he overtook the chariots of ahab some of you by this prayer this night i'm telling you god will take 10 years and put it in one month are you ready to receive now listen listen be your brother's keeper when i begin to pray people will start running just help them so they don't injure themselves father over the city of onisha and believers here over families businesses we have brought the gospel with its power and i declare as you have ministered to me there are men who have been under yokes of delay businesses that will not move forward destiny is held back i come by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic at the count of three may that grace for speed rest upon you one two three take that grace take that grace speed i prophesy speed help them speed to your destiny speed in business speed help them please my god speed of accomplishment speed in ministry in the mighty name of jesus christ no delay no delay no delay no delay i 
I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes for it is the power of God unto salvation there is a relationship between power and salvation hallelujah now listen we have to close tonight but I understand we have a session in the morning and then the final session tonight there are things from scripture by the grace of God that I'll be showing us in the session and then we'll do a miracle service where we'll be praying for the sick I'll be prophesying and we're going to be speaking over the two lip gates of this city it must open hither and tither it's time for God's people to make progress please whatever it takes if you can dedicate these moments and let your destiny receive something that your children and your children's children will eat from it says for this promise is unto you and to your children your children's children as many as are far off even those that the Lord will call hallelujah but for this night I want to make an altar call down listen very carefully listen very carefully please no movement an altar call is more than just a call for sinners an altar call is a proposition that seeks to reconnect you back to the love of Jesus guess what the Bible says Jesus is teaching in chapter 3 and verse 16 of John for God so loved the world that he gave his one at that time he was his one and only begotten son today he's not his one and only begotten son he's the first begotten of we the brethren that whoever believes in him there is a reward for believing that report he says you will not perish but you will have life everlasting the problem the sin problem cannot be solved by counseling it takes more than counseling there are many of you here you want permanent victory it is by running to Jesus now I'm going to make an altar call there's no need cajoling you and as I make that altar call two categories of people in one those who are saying apostle whilst I listen to you I know that I have not taken advantage of the love of the Father the love of Jesus I've been around the things of God but I'm yet to truly make Jesus my Lord my Savior my King then there is a second category that you're saying apostle I don't even know what I did but my life has gone completely haywire I need Jesus please clear the aisles I know there are people up the balcony the second level outside if they are coming for the altar call then allow them come I apologize for the inconveniences that we may have now but give me the honor to pray I'm going to count one to five run like there's fire on the mountain one I have decided to follow G no turning back no turning back if the front is exhausted they can just stand at the aisles protocol please walk with them once the front is exhausted they can stand no turning back no don't kneel please stand so that there will be space the world behind me the cross before me no turning back no turning back the world behind me the cross before me no turning back listen that's all right wherever you are you can stand right there as i make this prayer my beloved people please look at me this is not just an emotional issue just because of the power of god or the good preaching of a man someday the Bible is speaking about the Holy Spirit 
he says when he comes he will reprove the world of three things of sin of righteousness and of judgment this is what the bible says the holy spirit has a ministry to unbelievers he convicts them like he has done romans chapter 8 and verse 1 says um there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in christ jesus he says which walk not after the flesh but after the spirit why for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus hath set me free from the law of sin and death all of the ills in our society the solution starts with men and women who accept this message the message that enthrones jesus on it shall listen to me you were the first people to receive the gospel in many regards it was from this land that many dioceses were spread across many people have benefited no wonder i believe with all my heart that it may be one of the reasons why god has so honored your state in return because everywhere they receive the gospel it translates into sociological advancement economic advancement let us ensure that there will not come a generation that rejects jesus parents make sure before you go to your grave you don't just give your children business ideas and estates and cars the greatest problem the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation there are so many people here standing I believe that you are standing because you need Jesus can I tell you this as you make this declaration I want you to know that he's here some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears I see people standing both young and old our mothers and our fathers are here there's nothing to be ashamed of we're giving Jesus a chance this is how the missionaries when they brought the gospel they didn't work miracles like we're walking but they came with childlike faith and when they received the gospel they received every other thing that came with it hear me if your city rejects Jesus if your young people reject Jesus you will also reject the continuity of this heritage of wealth of wisdom of power and all it takes is one generation of carelessness and neglect respectfully speaking this is the challenge that the West has today the Western world their fathers and their mothers were sold out to God but they left their children behind and Satan gave up on the parents and came and grew with the children now the children are the presidents they are the CEOs Onisha let Jesus remain the epicenter every home and every family it's my honor to lead these precious ones who have come to Jesus someday the Bible declares by the authority of Scripture that trumpet will blow whether we like it or not Jesus is returning every condition that makes for his return is ongoing as I speak now he's coming he says why look you the angels speaking to the people that this same Jesus will return as you have seen him go everyone in hell today is a believer but they believe too late there is timing to believe in every time is not the right time he says in the day that you hear his voice harden not your heart as they did in the provocation in the wilderness ladies and gentlemen my brothers and sisters parents lift your right hand to heaven all of you who are making this decision unashamedly and I want you to say this after me let it be from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus one more time say Lord Jesus I believe in you that you are the son of God I believe that you walked upon the earth I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose from the dead 
for my justification tonight I willingly make Jesus my Savior my Lord and my King I receive the forgiveness of sin and I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that I also receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness from today I am a child of God I am saved I go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father we thank you and we honor you for this once when Jesus hung on the cross and he saw all of us including these ones lifting their hands we were worth his death we were worth his tears we were worth the sacrifice and now we have come young and old declaring his lordship over our lives I declare by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven and in the name of Jesus I declare that all of you are now recipients of the life of God I commend you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the Word I declare that you will be built you will be grounded you will be established in righteousness and that all through your life the remaining days of your life you will spend it living for Jesus and serving the purposes of the kingdom the power of sin the power of Satan, the power of hell, and the power of the grave are broken over your life forever. And every wrong association that will not let you serve Jesus in truthfulness and righteousness, I cut you away from them forever. You laid aside your majesty, gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today you reign in heaven and earth exalted i really want to worship you my lord you have won my heart and i am forever and ever I will love you you are the only one who died for me gave your life to set me free so I lift my voice to you in adoration from today the power to live a victorious Christian life is released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ now I'm not sure that there is there may be any provision there's a lot of people but here's what I want you to do for me um, now that I'm done praying for you I will request that you go back to your seat but if at any point the officials do demand that those who got born again should identify themselves whether by giving you a slip a card or inviting you to a place for a counseling session please do well to avail yourself is that fine the Lord bless you please return to your seat rejoicing let's celebrate them as they do so let's celebrate them as they do so hallelujah now very quickly let me give you if you will allow me let me give everybody here an assignment Go and look for at least two or three people who you know need Jesus and need an encounter with him and invite them here all through the program. If there is no space, even if they will sit on the roof, let them sit on the roof. But let there be space. Let us ensure that we extend the power and the glory and the grace of Jesus Christ. We still have a session in the morning, I understand. And then a session in the evening 
open up your heart and let's trust the Lord to do us much in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name.